Petros Gonzalez is and you're watching the Age of Metal. Uh, with the Age of Metal, here we're here today with Josh Middleton of Silosis. How are you today? Uh, good. Hot. But yeah, Is good. it hot? <laughs> yeah. You're not used to it? No. Alright, so you recently released your third album, Monolith, at the beginning of the month. Can you give us a little insight as to the meaning behind the title Monolith and the thematic elements found in the songs of this newest album? Um, the title was just uh, originally like the song, the title track Monolith on there was like the first song we wrote for the album. Um, and it was we just called it monolith as like a working title because like instead of having like new song one new song two every song gets like a just random song name and uh, that one just stuck and then that song kind of summed up like the vibe of the album uh in terms of just like the music and being darker and more eerie uh so yeah we just called it that there was no real meaning behind it but like lyrically it's a concept album um sort of about someone trying to bring someone back from the dead but uh, it, it like borrows ideas from this Greek myth, but it's not set in Greece or anything. But um, yeah, it's a, kind of a really elaborate story. So uh, we haven't really gone into detail. We're just kind of keeping it under wraps a bit for now. So. Okay. Um, how is this new album similar, or how does it differ to your past two albums, Conclusion of an Age and Edge of the Earth? Uh, it's darker, I guess, more mature, and. Uh, yeah, they're, they're more like, the production's more raw and like organic and that brings out uh, like a different sides to the band have come out this time, like more sludgy, doomy stuff, but only a bit here and there. Overall it's like, you know, fans of our band uh, probably still going to be into it just as much. And it's gone down really well, it's like much better than we uh, anticipated, so uh, yeah. Um, was it overwhelming at all releasing the third album so soon after the second? Uh, no, the reason because of that was because Edge of the Earth, the one before, took uh, forever to get like into the shops. Mm -hmm. like, we had finished recording it at the end of 2010, well like, no, September, or oh, way before that, like all the tracking. Mm -hmm. So, and it didn't get released until like March 2011. So that was like six months or so of um, just like mixing and getting the artwork ready. And in that time we'd written loads of material. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we had like a good head start in terms of the writing and by the time we'd got an album's worth of songs we were just like, we have to get this released. So um, yeah, we were just desperate to get the new album out. Okay. Um, how was, how's the experience been with having you as a new vocalist? Uh, yeah, it, it's taken me a while to get used to it just because I'm not really like a, a natural frontman sort of guy. I'm not like a loud loud mouth, I don't know, I'm just like an average guy, so uh, people like expect me to be like, yo, what's up? And uh, so yeah, it took me a little while to get used to it, and now I've just found my own place in it, and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it, it's fun, yeah. like, um, I don't know, yeah, it, it was annoying that I never really thought I could do it before, and just was doing it since the start, but <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. Alright, there have been various lineup changes since the inception of the band. How has this had any inf a considerable influence on the style of music that Zillow's is plays now? Um, probably not, no, because the writing, uh, the main like songwriting people have always been in the band. Um, like, on our Wikipedia, it's like l loads, of, like 15 ex members, yeah. but most of them are all like from when we were kids or before we'd even released any CDs. Oh, okay. So, uh, and it, it just, yeah, some of them were just in the band for like one tour and stuff, oh. <laughs> like a handful of them. So, uh, there, there have been lineup changes like on the albums, but um, it hasn't really affected the music. Okay. All right. Silosis is usually simply categorized as thrash, but from my experience listening to you guys, you have an eclectic mix of different metal elements. How would you personally describe yourself to people who aren't familiar with Silosis? Um, thrash, like mainly, uh, but. Yeah, we like like all the old school barrier thrash and then death. Like the album Symbolics, a huge influence, and that's not really thrash, but near enough. And then um, then stuff like Cult of Luna, which is really big, epic, uh, lots of like instrumental bits. Uh, and Pink Floyd and Rush for like the progressive stuff, and bands like Neurosis uh, and Mastodon. 
So uh, yeah, it's all about just trying to find a way to mix all these influences to make a band that, you know, like I think this new album is the best like representation of us because we've always had these influences or listened to these bands, but it's so hard to try and bring all the same influences in and make it sound like one band and we're just not just going off and doing random stuff like that just takes you by surprise. We want to make sure it like flows properly and yeah. so I think with this one like we've nailed what we're going for. Okay. You guys are still all relatively young. Has the growing success of Silos has been intimidating for any of you? Uh, I don't think so, no, because we've been doing it for like 10 years now and it's been really like slow progress. Yeah. Like, um, so we're, we're not like a big hype band or, you know, we've, we've been doing well and we've been doing like really well these last few years, but um, yeah, because it's been so slow and we've been doing it so long, like, it, yeah. It's hard for us <laughs> to like gauge how we're doing, so yeah. like we don't think we're as big as maybe we are. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, what made Silosis decide to drop out of Devon Townsend and Fear Factory tour in Europe? This tour. Uh, uh, <laughs> tour in Europe in order to support Lamb of God and Flames and Hatebreed on this tour. Um, basically, um, we had already had the tour booked in Europe, mm -hmm. and um, it was going to be awesome, but. Chris from Lamb of God just tried to get us on this tour and like was emailing me saying like really like you guys, uh, really want to get you on a tour, um, which was amazing. But I just didn't think that it would happen just because like there's always other people that have to approve yeah. of the lineup and stuff. Um, so I didn't hold my breath. And then when we got offered it, it was like, and it was like this is when it is. We we're like shit. Well, we've got another tour then. But um, it, it's such a huge deal for us because like it's really hard for us to get tours in the US mm -hmm. like we don't only done one tour and that was this time last year with Azalea dying uh, so we didn't know when we'd come back we we're thinking we'd have to come back and just do a tiny like headline tour or I don't know so um and America's such a huge market like we we can't make a living uh, if we just stick to Europe and the UK like you can only tour it like so many times a year so um yeah we just had to do it for like career reasons and the fact that it's a huge like the biggest tour we've done and it's yeah. in America so yeah okay so this is only your second time touring the US are there any cities you're looking forward to playing in particular um I'm trying to think I like Boston just because I know some people there and it, the scenery is a bit more like home okay <laughs> but um, no I, I love being on um like the coast and stuff and being in California is always oh. cool so like yeah, I saw getting some sun. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, in Venice Beach. So, um, like we, uh, you know, being in the sun's awesome. Like, it's hotter in the RV than it is out there. Like, I can, I can take it. It's fine. But, um, yeah, and in the coast, like New York and everything, and then the they're my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who has been your favorite band to tour with so far? Uh, Lamb of God. Even well, we haven't really toured with them. We did like two shows, um, like in July, June, July, mm -hmm. and. Like they're all really humble, really nice guys. Um, been really like all their crew as well. And just in terms of like their audience, it, like we don't really sound too similar, but we can meet up in the middle. But we can like kind of you know cross over to their fan base and like the the crowds um, that we play to with them were like so good. It, it felt like really um, it's gonna say like a headline show just in terms of how like responsive and yeah. good they were like. In, in that respect, obviously it was a Lamb of God crowd, it wasn't, it wasn't our crowd, but yeah, um, just them probably. <laughs> Alright, are there any bands you guys would like to tour with whom you haven't yet? Uh, well, Metallica, that's an obvious one, and Slayer, uh, but more realistic, uh, Gajira, a huge fan of them, um, and Mastodon, uh, we want to try and do something with Black Breath, love that band, uh, Revocation would be cool, like, these are more realistic things that we probably will yeah. be able to do. Uh, so yeah, I guess that. All right, so Lossus has played both festivals and tours. Which one do you guys prefer more? Um, I guess festivals sometimes. Um, especially like uh, Sonosphere and Download in the UK. Yeah. Uh, just because it's like home. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it, it's just such a cool like, atmosphere and you can like get drunk and there's loads of press and uh, <laughs> hang out with loads of friends and bands and stuff so yeah fest festivals are cool but um the tour like this is amazing for us so yeah this is kind of on a par yeah yeah all right so although this is only the beginning of this tour what are your plans after this tour ends 
Um, we're doing a UK headline tour uh, in end of January, which is like five shows, just because the UK is tiny. And uh, then we're going to Australia for the first time to do uh, Soundwave, which is like a touring festival over there. So that'll be our first time in Australia. So you guys are busy for a while. Um, yeah, not not too busy. Like that's like really short tour, and then Australia is only two weeks. So we've got like time off here and there. It's okay. cool. All right. Well, that's all I cool. have for you today. Thank you all so right. much for speaking. No